it's an honor to be here and talk to all of you about the Flip Video story. This is a brand that's in its infancy. We launched it in May of last year. So what you're going to see today is real time, to say the least. Uh, we've learned a lot along the way. We've made a lot of mistakes. I'll be the first to admit that's a separate, much longer presentation. Um, but we've also had the good fortune to really get some traction with this brand and in laying the foundation for this category of one idea. And I want to talk further as we get a little further into this about the category of one concept. This represents a strategic de decision on the part of our team to look to revolutionize the way people interact with camcorders, to fundamentally introduce new benefits and a new language to the interaction consumers have with both capturing and sharing video. And our objective in that is to create this new category and to own it. So just a high level overview of what I'd like to discuss. I'll give you a quick summary of Pure Digital, who we are, what we're about, the opportunity we saw in the camcorder category, the story behind Flip, a little bit on the results, and then I'd like to leave some time at the end just to answer your questions. So let's talk about video as it stands today. What's interesting about the camcorder category, if you talk to anyone you know, you'll probably hear the same three fundamental truths. We heard this through all the consumer research we did, and you know, frankly, I, I'm pretty confident that most of you would agree with these same assumptions. So video today is all about special occasions. Weddings, graduations, school plays, guys with multicolored cummerbunds. Uh, very staged. It doesn't lend itself very well to the spontaneous. Second piece, video is incredibly complex and cumbersome. You know, if I took my two-year-old to the park and she started doing something really cute, it would work just fine to capture and share that on my $700 mini DVD eight, uh, Sony camcorder, provided that I lugged that big bag on my shoulder, I could pull the camcorder out of the bag, I could attach the battery after making sure it was charged through the charger that I have to carry around, and of course I have to go back connect the wire to my computer, install the software, transcode the video, email it to friends and family, and cross my fingers that they're able to view the video in the same format that I have. So bottom line is not a lot of people do that, right? It's, it's a category that's very much stuck with technophiles, people who have the technical sophistication and the time and inclination to want to do that. And then here's the third truth about video. It's the proverbial shoebox. Universally, we ask people, what do you do with the video when you, you shoot these special occasions? What do you do once you capture it? And across the board, we hear, it sits in a shoebox in my closet. I would love to do something with it. I would love to edit it. I'd love to share it with family. I just don't have the time. So three fundamental issues with video that are keeping it from really exploding. And I'll look a little further at the video category. And what's interesting, the video category did not grow. It was zero growth from 2000 to 2006. And less than 20% of the size of the still camera category. Now still cameras, interestingly, if you rewind about 20 years, that was a 5 million unit category. <clears throat> what happened? Well, still cameras 20 years ago were really focused on hobbyists. You had your fancy SLR camera. You knew how to focus it. You knew how to adjust the lighting. You might have had a dark room. Uh, it wasn't a very user-friendly process, but that changed with the advent of the point-and-shoot camera. We had you know, the Kodak disc, we had the autofocus cameras that came out, and now we have the Canon ELF. This opened up video for the masses, and interestingly, a lot of that was driven by women, by mothers. The, the, the chief memory officer, we like to call them in the family. They're the ones who carry the camera around. They, take pictures and they archive it, and then you saw this whole back end emerge with Kodak Gallery, Snapfish, and all these new ways to share the photographs you were capturing. Video is stuck where still cameras were 20 years ago. It's almost the exact same analogy. Now at the same time, I, I don't think it would surprise any of you to, for me to tell you that this little thing called YouTube happened recently. Right? And you know, this is the graph of online video sharing. I think most of us have seen it. It's just through the roof. And as we all know, about three quarters of that usage is from people under 24. So junior high school, high school, college kids. 
So what this leaves us is two addressable markets, about 75 million people when you add up the parents and the students. So interesting category opportunity. And this led us to this idea of a category of one. You know, as we looked at this, we felt like, and we just had a long discussion about this at table number four in the uh, challenge of brand discussion. You, know, you can't, to, to reshape this category, you can't just talk about features and technical specs, right? We had to create a brand. We had to introduce a meaningful benefit to the consumer that didn't exist today and spoke a new language. So we looked to redefine video, right? It's personal, spontaneous, and simple. And I should add fun to that, right? None of those adjectives describe video today. And our objective in doing that and creating a brand that stands for those things is that we can take the rest of the category, the JVCs, the Sonys, the Panasonics, and we can push them into their own little corner, right? They all come out with the same features at the same price points at the same time. And they're all very good at that. I don't, I don't mean to demean them in any way, uh, but the story they tell to the consumer and the retail and the retailer is essentially, look, we're all doing more or less the same thing and we're gonna duke it out for share, right? So by taking a different approach, our objective is to deposition those guys, let them stand for what they stand for. We're gonna stand for something different. And we drew some inspiration from you know, a few very successful brands. So many, you know, the Yugo and the Hyundai weren't considered fashionable cars, right? Small cars were about value and about simplicity, um, but there was nothing really aspirational about that. Many changed that. You know, many made small cars cool. I don't think many drivers are wishing they had bigger cars. Starbucks, you know, talk about a category that was zero growth for years. Howard Schultz had the vision to come in and completely flip the category on its back and you know, introduce the experience. And with that, they built incredible brand equity. And there's a, you know, the, who would have thought that you could have branded going into a coffee shop? And then a more recent example, we've got the Wii. You know, it's a little story for you. So one of my coworkers, was looking, we're sitting at work a couple weeks ago and he's looking at photos that he got uh, via email from his mom's 70th birthday. And you know, there's the cake, the presents, all that. The last couple of frames are her and her seven-year-old friends playing the week, right? <laughs> and you know, he'd be the first to tell you that his mom and her friends don't get together and play Grand Theft Auto on the PlayStation, right? So, you know, fascinating the way Nintendo has approached this. They've even positioned it as something that can be exercised. Who would have ever thought that video games could be exercised? They always stood for the opposite of exercise. And you know, on a side note, what's fascinating is they've done this with very little general market advertising. So we looked at all these examples and said, look, it's been done before in different categories. We need to think about branding a different sort of experience in video. So let me introduce you to Flip Video. I'm gonna ask my assistant here to pass around some camcorders. Uh, this is the Flip Video camcorder. Uh, you'll see we're gonna we're gonna pass them around so you guys can play with them. It's incredibly simple, fits in the palm of your hand, and part of the beauty of it is it has a USB arm that pops right up. You hook it into your computer. There's built-in software on the camcorder, so you can email videos to friends and family, publish them directly to YouTube. I'll walk you through more of the details in a minute. It runs in AA batteries. Okay. So this is about this is a simple solution to shoot and to share. The instruction manual is about I, I can't show it to you. It, it it's small. Okay. Uh, there's no DVD, no software to install. Everything is in the camcorder. So that's the Flip Video brand we introduced at CES of last year. So let me talk a little bit more about how this compares to traditional camcorders. So who's the target? And we talked about this a little bit already. Traditional camcorders target men who are very tech savvy. It's a finite universe of people. Uh, they've been the ones who've used, used camcorders for the last umpteen years. That's why the category hasn't grown. Flip targets everybody else. And I, I say that to oversimplify it, but generally it's for the rest of us. It's about universality. Usage, you know, traditional camcorders let them own the special occasions. We're not asking people to take their flip and hold it up at the wedding for the hour-long ceremony. This is the camcorder you use to capture the 
the chaos with the bridal party five minutes before and all the fun everyone had after. It's the, it's the camcorder used for the spontaneous moment. You know, I tell you, as a parent of a young child, I use this all the time. Because you can't recreate those moments. If you, if you want to get out your traditional camcorder, if it's charged, it's hard for me to tell my two-year-old, hey, that was just so adorable. Could you, I know you did that 10 minutes ago, but could you just do it again, right? The, that moment escapes. It, it, it doesn't happen again. Yeah. Other camcorders, you store your videos in the closet. With Flip, it's something you take with you. Believe me, you know, we will have succeeded if everyone who owns a Flip has it in their pocket or their purse. That's part of the reason it's important to us that it be so small and portable. Archiving, you know, we talked about the shoebox. We provide through our software the ability to do this directly yourself on your computer. It works a lot like iTunes in the sense that you open our software, you can create folders of anything you want and save and organize your videos that way. And then sharing, you know, the reality is very few people are able to do it. We've got built into our software the ability to upload your videos directly on these different websites. So this is our flagship line, the Ultra Series. This is what's going around the room. I wanted to spend just a minute on the product specs so you understand what it's all about. So retails for $150. Hardware has 60 minutes of built-in memory. So there's no memory card, nothing you have to remove, nothing additional you have to buy. It's all in the camcorder. Different colors. Uh, high quality video, this is something that's important to us. You know, I don't want you to think that, oh, it's $150, it has to be poor quality. We actually sell this with a cable that connects directly into your TV. You can project it onto a you know, big screen, flat screen TV. The quality is as good as, it, as the quality you'd find with a five or $600 camcorder. And it runs on AA batteries. So anywhere you are, if your camcorder is not charged, you can pop into AA batteries and continue to use it. The software, so we have agreements with YouTube, AOL, MySpace. You can upload directly to their sites. You can also email privately. You know, a lot of people, uh, particularly parents, may not want footage of their children to be on YouTube, so we give them the option to send that directly through the software. You can do some basic editing, create some highlight reels, uh, and then you can also capture photos from your videos. I'm hearing all the beats. That's good. That's, good. That's the flip video sound. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the positioning for this. We started with the easiest camcorder we could design, and then we stopped. <laughs> I can't tell you how painful it is to make product decisions when we're all about simplicity, right? You know, every time we add new features and we've got a, a pretty extensive product roadmap, we always have to ask ourselves, are we delivering this feature without sacrificing our simplicity? At the end of the day, we have to continue to be simple. And this is very much the essence of what our product's about. We don't put in all the extra things that you, know, you think you'd want, but you'll never use, right? This is not a video camcorder, an MP3 player, and a walkie-talkie. It's a camcorder, and it's a good camcorder. You know, I'm completely objective. <laughs> it's just like your expensive camcorder, except you'll, except you'll actually use this one. And this is interesting. You know, we did some user research at the end of last year to get a better sense of how people were using it. A lot of people who bought flips did own a, a camcorder already, and they bought this as a, sec as a secondary one, and they start using it all the time. And then there are other people who just stayed away from the category. Either way, it's highly incremental. Behaviorally, these are people who are predisposed to capture and share memories. They're people who take 50 plus photographs a year, so they're already accustomed to doing this sort of thing with photography, and we're just asking them to do the same thing with video. We're building on that behavior. And attitudinally, these are people who we like to say are engaged in life. They're spontaneous, they're very connected to their friends and family, they're active online. I mean, these aren't introverts. I think it would be difficult to really inspire sharing with people who aren't used to sharing photos and you know, other things anyway. Um, the positioning, as I mentioned, it's about simplicity. It's a social product. It's supposed to be approachable, and it's fun. You know, one of the things we find is that when you walk around with this, you find new reasons to take video that you wouldn't thought of before. Right? Having it in your hand creates new content. It becomes an inspiration for that, and that's kind of exciting. 
So of that 75 million households I mentioned earlier, this represents about 42 million. We've got in our pipeline some other products to address that younger demo more directly, and obviously in a different way. So I'm going to spend the next couple of minutes talking about how we launched the brand. As I said, we introduced it last May. So we started with TV advertising. I'm going to show you that in a second. I would say this was very important for a couple of reasons. One is it just helped seed the brand and build awareness. But secondly, it also presented us a story of credibility to our retailers. You know, here we were, small company, uh, saying we're going to change video as it stands today. And I'm sure that a lot of retailers have heard that before. It was important that we showed them we were so serious that we were investing in creating this new brand. Uh, and you know, the, the, what worked well for, the, for us was that that ran at the beginning of the summer, right as our key retailers were making their distribution and merchandising decision for the holiday. And about 50% of the category sales happened between Thanksgiving and New Year. So it was incredibly important to time that and get that support. We also did a lot of online advertising. This ranged from banner campaigns and sites like CNET, where people were reading reviews, to working with some of our partners and our software like AOL, MySpace, and YouTube. And then also, uh, you know, we spent a lot of our marketing budget on paid search. And that was incredibly efficient and very effective in getting our name out there. You know, when you've got a new brand and nobody's heard of it, the name gets planted in their head or they're searching other camcorder related terms, it's important that we can, they can find Flip through Google, Yahoo, and other search engines. So here's the TV spot. What will you see today? What will you find? Something beautiful? Inspiring? Bizarre? Or will it be so unique that it just won't work in words? Starting today, there is no you should have seen it. No more, I wish you'd been there. From now on, when life gives video, you take video. From now on, there's Flip, the shoot and share camcorder. Okay, so I mentioned our partnerships. I'm going to talk for a second about a couple of the tactics we put in place to leverage those. So Amazon, one of Amazon's most important products in their store is their reviews. Uh, they, this past fall, launched the ability for their consumers to post video reviews. So we partnered with them to sponsor that launch. Basically, you saw a message about Flip next to the top of the review section of every single product in their store whether they had video reviews posted or not. So that was about three billion impressions. And as part of that, we gave Flip camcorders to their top 500 reviewers, thinking that A, they'll generate content, but B, they'll be likely to review Flip. And the, the lead reviewers are the ones who get the most visibility. So that helped us uh, drive our business on Amazon. MySpace, you know, we built MySpace into our software. You can imagine the situation they're in. They're worried about YouTube and they're worried about Facebook. So it's very important to them to cap start capturing this content and to use Flip as an on-ramp to get more video into their environment. So as, in addition to adding them into the software, uh, they basically ran a bunch of marketing programs to help drive awareness. So here's an example of, of something they ran on their site to drive traffic. It was over two billion impressions to either our MySpace community page or to our website. So we let them tell the story for us. And then YouTube and AOL are also partners in our software. They did a number of things that were helpful. For instance, YouTube as a holiday gift, Google I should say, more broadly gave uh, camcorders to a whole bunch of their partners, um, many of whom were very influential bloggers. So when it comes to search results or just general buzz on the web, a lot of these people started talking about the camcorder and using it for their video blogs. We also we have a great PR agency, and we had a lot of success with the press, and this has always been a main focus of ours. Online, broadcast, um, Walt Mossberg's been a good friend and, and putting very favorable reviews on the journal, and we managed to get into an Oprah episode in the fall with the with Chad and Steve, the YouTube founders, and she introduced our camcorder at the end, and you can imagine that certainly helped. <laughs> I love that picture. So I wanna talk for a second about what we did in the channel. You know, the, we're, we're dealing with some of the biggest retailers in the country, and you can imagine some of the challenges we run into 
with introducing a new brand at a lower price point. You know, if you look at our experience on Amazon, the way we like to think about it is if you go to Amazon looking for Flip, you'll read the reviews, you'll read the ratings, there's a good chance, and, and you can read our product information, there's a good chance we'll persuade you to buy it. If you go to Amazon looking for a camcorder, you'll see that we're ranked right up at the top, and then you'll read the reviews and the product information and the ratings. There's a good chance we can persuade you to buy it then. Neither of those two, two things hold true in the brick and mortar environment. You know, you've got the, uh, the blue shirts at Best Buy who don't know anything about this brand. And frankly, you can go into some of these stores, tell them you want a flip camcorder, and they may not even know they carry it, which is frustrating. Uh, and they're just very accustomed to selling people on the latest features, the higher price point, the, the brands they're familiar with. So our investment in the channel really served two objectives. One was to drive awareness at the point of purchase, make sure our product was visible, but also it was to educate the store associates. And we started to see some real progress there. And when you go into the store, you ask them about Flip, you start to hear, oh yeah, that thing's cool. It's the one camcorder that uploads directly to YouTube. So you got an example of an end cap from Target here, a shipper at Best Buy, and a circular, excuse me, end cap from Walmart, shipper at Best Buy, and a circular ad from Target. Uh, so we made a, a strategic bet to invest heavily in the channel in the fourth quarter during the holidays. And then finally, you know, we made a, a conscious effort to reach out to some influencers. We sent our CEO on tour. This is him with Martha Stewart. Him with George Lucas and Kara Swisher. Paris. Talking on her phone while filming. It's just incredibly multi-talented and multi-talented. <laughs> <laughs> This one was fun. So we had a, a couple of contacts in the political world, and they put the camcorders uh, in the hands of some of the key campaigns. And so here's one. Uh, you can see I circled it. There's, a, there's somebody reaching out to shoot Obama and a lot of other people who look very, very excited to see him, too. So you know, we felt like that's a great opportunity to capture footage and inspire some citizen journalism. And then finally, Rosie O'Donnell. Rosie, we didn't even give her a camcorder. She found one through a friend and has become an incredible advocate. She blogs about it. She carries it on the red carpet to turn the table on the paparazzi. Um, and you know, we've gotten, she has a very loyal following. We've gotten, I think, probably 50 plus unsolicited e emails from people saying, you know, I only bought this because Rosie loves it. And people need to respect Rosie and listen to her and understand her. <laughs> you know, just because you're on Oprah doesn't mean you shouldn't respect Rosie. We love Rosie, believe me. Uh, but, you know, it's been an important way to get the word out there. We've tried to be choiceful about that. So a little bit on the results we saw in our, in our first year, which, is, which isn't even complete. So this takes you through the end of uh, last year. So distribution at all the major chains. The one big chain we didn't have was Circuit City, and they'll be launching us in May, so we're excited about that. <laughs> Solid sales results. We were number one at a lot of our key customers. And if you look at December, which was the first month we really had full distribution and the, everyone was out in, with their full merchandising plan, we had 13% share. Uh, and I'll show you here, it's a little bit hard to read, but that Sony in the blue wedge is a clear number one. And then you've got about five players shooting for number two. We're the little light green wedge there. And one of our objectives for this year is to move into a clear number two position where we can push those other guys out of the way. And then this chart, you know, I mentioned on Amazon, they rank their products by best sellers. So, you know, it's a great way to test at any point how you're doing in the category. It's also a great laboratory to compare how one model selling versus another. So, this is a screenshot, and we saw this multiple times during the fourth quarter. Five of the top, excuse me, six of the top seven camcorders, including all of the top five, were various models of flip. So that's something we're excited about, and that's the gift that keeps on giving, because whenever someone comes back to the site and search camcorders, it's going to be hard for them not to see ours. And then another thing that was incredibly important was the story we had to tell the retailers around incrementality. You know, I mentioned earlier, that you know, a lot of these existing camcorder players, <clears throat> a lot of these existing camcorder players are just duking it out for market share at the same price point with the same features. Flip was incredibly incremental. The category, as I said, didn't grow for years. It grew 14% in the fourth quarter. That's the kind of story that helps us immensely with our retailers because they're growing their business. 
we did some consumer research, only 30% of the people who bought Flip went actually looking for it. Everyone else heard about it through word of mouth or through various marketing campaigns or saw it in store. So that helps us when it goes when it comes to wanting to launch new products and get additional merchandising support because the retailers see that it's adding dollars to the category. Now I mentioned the press a little bit. Uh, we had a lot of coverage, a lot of gift guide recommendations, which is fantastic during the holidays. USA Today named us camcorder of the year, so all of that just contributed to the buzz and to the search volume. And then we also looked at how successful we were in building awareness. 17% awareness at the end of the year. We've got a long way to go. At the same time, we look at this and say, hey, we achieved an awful lot with 17%. Let's start thinking or let's start dreaming about what the upside would be if we could double or triple that. And then one stat that our product team is really proud of is that 95% of the people who use the brand would recommend it. So the, the unfortunate thing for them is we've said, hey, you've got to hold that number with everything else we launched. So the bar's been set pretty high for them. But it helps us in terms of thinking about building a community of evangelists. And it also you know, gives us confidence that what we launch is going to be well received. <clears throat> so finally, I just want to talk a little bit about what's coming down the road. Uh, a pretty extensive product roadmap. We've got a number of innovations we're launching in the hard, on the hardware side. Continuing to innovate in our software. The nice thing with the software is that we can continue to push updates. It doesn't matter which version of the camcorder you have. When you plug your USB arm in, it will know what version you have, and it will know that we can push you the latest and greatest features. Accessories, we've launched a lot of accessories already, some of which I think went around the room. We launched an underwater case, which is a fun way to, uh, to take video. One of the guys who works with us took his surfing last week, which was dizzying but fun to watch. And then we're launching internationally this year. On the marketing front, we've got a number of things going on. This year will be very much about online. I think you'll, it's less likely you'll see us investing in TV. We will be layering in an element of grassroots and event marketing. This is the opportunity to reach probably you know, a fewer number, a smaller number of people, but to reach them in a more meaningful way where they can interact with it. It helps me to pass these around and give you guys a chance to see it and hold it and see how it's different. That's harder to do through general market advertising. So that's something we'll be building in with a particular focus on youth, college campuses, Facebook, that kind of thing. And then I touched on community building. And we've got hundreds of thousands of people now who own flips. And we have to figure out how to convert those people to evangelists for the brands, to make them loyal so that they'll buy our future innovations, and then also to make sure that they're recommending to their friends. We'll continue to bet in the channel, but we've got to do that selectively. We can't spend everywhere. And then finally, we're an 80-person company. We're privately held. We're making some big bets. It's important that we build our organization to support this. We've got very aggressive targets. So as we scale up, we're building the team. We're building our sophistication, and we're learning as we go. Questions? Product placements with 
some of the influential talk show people and celebrities, you know, it, it, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. I mean, there was a lot of aggressive outreach on our part through back channels. But I would say at the end of the day, we've relied on the product to sell itself. And the key thing is to get it into their hands and let them interact with it. Our CEO met Martha at the All Things D conference and placed it in her hand and showed it to her and that opened the door. Oprah learned about it through, you know, we, we, managed, we managed to get someone in to see her and introduce her to it and she was sold. So a lot of it, I'd like to say it was all smart marketing, but it was also a matter of having a product that they could believe in when they saw and we tried to apply that same model with all of our consumers. How do we, how do we introduce them to the aha moment uh, without necessarily letting them hold the product and that's, that's part of the challenge. Did you guys start with the with the idea um, that you were going to build something simple, and then build it, or did you did somebody come up with the simple thing, and then you decided to position it as a simple thing? Yeah. Uh, that's a great question. <laughs> question: If everyone can hear that, was how did we start with this? Did it did it start with this idea of building a simple camcorder, or did we find our way into it? It's a little bit of both. So you know, a little bit of background on the company. We. Our, our legacy business has been in single-use digital cameras and single-use camcorders. They're private label, you can buy them in the drug channel, bring it into the store and then process it there. So we introduced this one-time use camcorder, the first ever single-use camcorder in the spring of 05. And one of the things we learned from it was that all the consumers who touched it said, that's really cool, I don't want to give it back, I want to keep it. And that led us into this whole test market saying, well what if, what if we took a camcorder and made it reusable. Uh, and through a series of decisions and interesting events, we decided to brand that ourselves, which was not something we had traditionally done. So we test marketed it with, frankly, very little marketing. And it was incredibly successful. That was in the ho during the holidays of 06. And at that point, we said, you know what? We're onto something here. We reorganized the company. We raised around a financing to invest specifically in marketing it, and we launched the brand a little over a year ago. Well, a little less than a year. I, What's the big differentiator between my digital camera that takes video, that does both? And why would I want another one? Sure. Uh, that's a great question. We hear that a lot. What's the difference between a camera that takes video and flip as a camcorder? So a couple of things. One is that that the process is not nearly as simple. Most people who are able to take video on their camcorder and then get it off and attach it in an email and send it through have more tech savvy than the average person. And frankly, you know, I, I don't think we've ever presupposed that Flip was for uber technophiles. Now, at the same time, I, I, don't, I wouldn't suggest that sharing off of a cam digital camera is that complicated. There is another consideration, which is the quality. Basically, what you're doing is you're making video on a two-on-one product. So it's funny, people always ask us well, about megapixels, and those megapixels have absolutely nothing to do with video. In fact, on a camera, you take a bunch of megapixels and you convert them into video, it just degrades the quality. So the best thing you can do for video quality is have a sensor that only does video. So actually, just on a side note, I was going to say that Casio has a camera out, which they have, has a little YouTube sticker on it now, right? It's the digital camera that uploads to YouTube. What that really means is it takes low enough quality video that it matches what you can put on YouTube, right? Our approach is to say, look, we're going to take high quality video, and then if you want to put it on YouTube, we'll convert it for you. Hi. Uh, the, uh, the industrial design really matches your The question about the industrial design, a little bit of both. Most of it came internally. We did have a little bit of outside help in our next generation product, but mostly it was off of uh, some products we had built ourselves and then iterated off of. What's your online presence like in terms of your own website? And do you leverage it to ask and answer a lot of these consumer types of questions about quality? Because as a consumer, those are I have a whole myriad of. <laughs> Well, yes, it's probably easier there, but could I still put it into iMovie if I wanted to? And things like that. It seems like your website, I've not seen it, but is it a tool that you're currently using or plan to use to address the host of concerns that people will have? This is a question about how we use our website to answer the natural questions that people would have about the brand. The answer is yes, we are doing it that way. Frankly, we need to do it better. 
and particularly as we have this installed base of owners, one of the ways we like to do that is to build a community and let people interact through forums and share ideas. We were talking earlier, I think that's something that eBay does incredibly well. We need to learn from that. The other thing we've done is we've used some of our partners as proxies for that. In MySpace, we have a custom community on MySpace. We let the MySpace users talk to each other about it. And you know, I think that's part of it is we, we need to find, or Amazon for that matter, we need to find other environments where we can answer those questions because a lot of them do come naturally. Are there any other uh, proprietary technologies in the phones beyond the basic uh, hardware? I'm just wondering, I'm not sure with these phones, you, you got to be a culture. It's our favorite phone phones all the time. It's not something about the phone phones. Yeah. Um, but with so many other camera makers, you know, big ones, Sony, JVC, Pioneer, and all that, how hard would it be for them to just make a small, you know, something similar to this? That's why there's any other proprietary technologies that uh, flips open to take advantage of. Right? The question was about whether we're using private, pro excuse me, I'm just a proprietary technology to build an advantage. You know, I can answer that a couple of ways. I can give you the technical answer, was, which is yes, we have certain pieces of defensible technology, et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, like, if someone wants to copy it, they'll find a way to copy it or come off with close to it. I, we don't fool ourselves on that. The reality is, this is why the marketing piece is so important. We've got a chance to build a, a head start from a branding standpoint, and that's why we can't sit tight with 17% awareness. It's incredibly important that we lock down our advantage and own this category of one. That's part of the idea. We need to own that before anyone else can get in. Now, part of the challenge that the bigger, more established brands have is it's a little bit harder for them to stand for $1,000 super high-end HD camcorder and at the same time stand for $150 simplicity. So that works a little bit in our favor. What is the, the one thing that you want the Flip brand to stand for? And what are you doing to build that? That's a great question. What's the one thing we want Flip to stand for? You know, I, at, at the end of the day, I think from a product standpoint, we want it to stand about simplicity. The higher order benefit we're after, and frankly, we're talking to agencies about this right now and really trying to, to hone our thinking in around it, but I think a lot of it is around freedom and democratization of video. Right? You should be, the simplicity should inspire you to do things and inspire you to document your life and share your life in ways that you can't currently do it with video. And we think there's incredible power in that because that, that's part of what gives us an opportunity to different, differentiate video from still cameras and some of the other forms of media. And because video isn't very friendly that way right now, we think we can really inspire people to do new things with it. Got time for one last question. Can I get it? All right. Hey, thanks for your time. I appreciate the questions. It's been fantastic.